Let's go. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of It's a Dharmar. Today I have amazing Jennifer Wrestling, which I wanted to interview for a long time. She has been working for Six More Vodka, now she's working in Riot, and her work always blows my mind because it's very unusual for me and totally different from what I do. And I know that many of you would like to hear, hear her story and how did she become a professional concept artist working for some of the best clients in the world. Hi Jennifer, how are you? Hey, how are you? I'm excellent, how about you? What's, what's the time there? That's my first question. Uh, wait, wait, I have to check. It's uh, 11, 4. Yeah, it's in the morning. I just had a shower. <laughs> I know that we woke you up. I apologize for that. But no, uh, no, no. I've been awake for a few hours already. It's fine. Mm, did you have a little bit fear of my stream? <laughs> no, no. I just used to wake up early lately. Nice. So, Jennifer, what I want to know for the beginning is... Let's start from the start, actually. I read on your website that you wrote how it all started, but I would like to ask you, did you always draw or that happened after in some uh, later period of your life? How did it, that go? Uh, I think I was always drawing, but not really seriously. I think I picked it up when I was 16, 17, when I was reading a lot of mangas. And we had a, like my dad's friend was always um, giving us a lot of books. And I started like, uh, tracing them and then drawing my own like characters in manga style and there was like this uh, website in Germany where there was like a manga and anime co community and that's where I was always uploading all the stuff yeah that's how it started that's how it started for you so yeah how, how did did you start you studied graphic design that's what I read how did the transition from there happen to the concept art because I know many of us started studying something else because in our time there was no concept art to study and yeah. how, how did right. you learn about concept art how did you investigate that and come um, to the conclusion before, you want to do it before i uh, studied graphic design i was already like starting to get more and more into digital art like transitioning from like manga i at some point i was like no this is not where i want to go it's not leading me anywhere so i started picking up uh like painting with the Wacom graphic tablet and going more and more into this um, digital 2D art, uh, like com on communities like DeviantArt and stuff like that. And then I finished uh, school and I was a bit lost first because I didn't know what to do. I was like one year doing nothing. <laughs> and there was nothing close to my hometown and also um, Financially, I could not like move somewhere really far to go to like a good school. So I was looking around what's in the area, and I f like I found some schools that were doing stuff that is kind of the direction like illustration, but integrated in some courses like graphic design. So that's why I picked it. But it's never it was never like exactly what I wanted to do. There was just no game art or concept art courses in my area. I see, I see. So you had to explore and it was like an adventure for you because I know for me it was an adventure. I studied industrial design. Was it also for you like that? How did you explore on internet? Did you visit the old forums, conceptart.org or? Yeah, actually I also thought about doing industrial design and in my um, university they had fashion design, industrial design, jewelry, car design. So it was kind of like a good mix and I could also sit into their drawing courses. I think that's that was a nice um, thing that I kind of picked up, but it's not like an official like curriculum of the school. So I really like that there's like different stuff you could pick up, but it's not like really a school of illustration or anything like that. Mm. And then you started then you started painting for yourself. And that's how you started exploring, right? This kind of field, the concept art. How did you, my main is question, I know that many designers would like to join Six More Vodka and many designers have, actually artists, they have dream to come there. How did that happen for you? Because hitting a company that big, I think it's like a dream, right? Yeah, definitely. Back then it was because my university in the fifth semester, they required you to have like a practical semester. So I had to apply to companies 
and I didn't have a strong portfolio back then. So I was just, I just had digital art and I wanted to do something like that because I knew that from my university, I would never get that. Like they would never teach me more. So I was trying to apply to places like game companies or concept art studios. And of course in Germany, there weren't that many <laughs> and it's still, there are not that many. So yeah. I just tried my luck. Like after having like a lot of uh, rejection letters from other companies, uh, I just, tr I was like, fuck this. I'm just going to apply to SMV, Six Mile Vodka and, and kind of worked out. So I, I was really happy. Like I couldn't believe it. I was just like, okay, let's just send this email. I didn't even like put much into the email, just like my portfolio link and really happy it worked out. Mm, I'm also happy for but you. I think I wouldn't have applied if my university would not have required it because just by myself, I wouldn't have had the confidence to just mm, go yeah. apply without any reason. Yeah, ma many artists do struggle with confidence, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, very brave move from you to send because uh, sending email to six more vodka is a little bit, you know, hard and uh, it is uh, heavy to do something like that because you're always afraid if what if they reject me, what if this happens. Yeah, yeah. But, but you landed, landed an internship there and that's how it all started. Yeah, I think definitely always try because I wouldn't have tried just by myself. I had just the reason that I have to find that internship that was for me important back in that day. So I just applied everywhere but just by myself I wouldn't have done it but I would encourage everyone just if they really want to do something and are passionate about it just apply no matter don't wait like like I have a portfolio in two years just do it and then try again if you like feel more ready in later time yeah I absolutely do agree with you what I want to know is how, how did that uh, work in the Six Form Vodka, if you can talk about that? How, how were your first months? Uh, was it hard adjusting to the team? And what were your biggest mistakes back then? I know that many students would like to hear that kind of stuff. Well, I was uh, like, that was so early in my career of like digital painting. So for me, it was actually the first time I met other artists coming from the countryside in a small village. Mm. I was like mind blown, <laughs> literally mind blown. Yeah. So that was, um, I don't know, it was just soaking up all the stuff. And I don't, while I was there, I wasn't feeling like I was doing progress. And I think after I left, because it was a timed internship, I had to go back to university. That's when I had the time to kind of process and work on my stuff. And yeah, mm. I think it's a lot first, of course. Yeah, so many information flying all over your head because yeah. there are so many professional artists in that studio that are on such a high level and... Uh, yeah, it's like going from zero to like, oh, all the senior artists that are so good and it's just, it was also, I was young and there was, I was live like I had to move to Berlin from like a small village. It was just like a lot at first, mm -hmm. but... But, Definitely an experience, yeah. Yeah, but you survived. <laughs> you survived. I and, survived. <laughs> and I think that you're doing really, really good because your work is amazing. And now you are in Riot, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you moved to Riot after six more vodka. But before talking about Riot, I would like to ask you a couple of things. What I love about your work is that it is full of color. And there is something magical about it, you know, because when I look at it, uh, there is such a dynamic in these pieces of yours that mm -hmm. they, they catch my eye immediately. Uh, I always wanted to ask you, how did you achieve that kind of quality of work? What was, what were the steps to achieve it? What were the inspirations and what was the hardest to master? Because this is really uh, one of the, your work is really on one very, very high level and I love it and would like to hear more about it. Oh, that's such a big question. That's like <laughs> let's let's shorten it a bit. What was the hardest to master to become a master of this kind of art? I think everything is slow and it's like s lots of small steps. It's not like one big thing, but there's always like it's like little pockets of what you can go into, like color or light. And yeah, whenever I like found something I'm like excited about and then I was like going more into it and yeah I think with color it's always something that was really important for me like I I know some people for example 
start in black and white and, and put color on top. And like my brain cannot compute that. <laughs> like I'm too stupid for that. I always start in color. It's like I kind of need the base. I also really like the traditional approach where, you know, they had like underpaintings before they started a real painting and how colors interact with each other, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, it's super so, interesting for me. Yeah, but you, I, I mean, if I started in color, I would get lost. And it's funny because you're like, I can't do it if I don't start in color. I mean, it's for yeah, my, yeah. my brain, for example, can process it. It can process it, but your brain obviously works in a different manner. And I can see that because color is really the most important thing on your image. I start in color, but I still do like some steps. Like I put first like the base color, then I put the light and it's still kind of like broken up into steps, but it's not like right, right away all in one layer. <laughs> That's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. You also mentioned that you like traditional kind of way of working do you work in traditional way have you worked before not that much like i never had the means to work a lot in traditional art I, for example i never tried oil i really would love to at some point and uh i don't know i just i think switching from digital to traditional it's really helps to like get the best of both sides but i wish i had more time to do that i don't really do much Mm, I see. But I think, for example, if you do studies in gouache or watercolor, you can like take a lot from how you use the strokes and take it back to digital and stuff like that. But yeah, I basically grew up with digital art, so <laughs> I'm not really good in traditional mediums. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we are all the generation of which is in between traditional and the digital era, and uh, the tablets became. Uh, you, you could get them more easily in our age because they got a bit cheaper and I think that we were in between and we were all trying a digital because it looked like something new and something that you can investigate like today everybody's trying VR and yeah. uh, have you tried 3D maybe or you're just at the moment working in 2D do you have some idea that you can move in that direction no, I wish I could 3D but you don't no, I, mostly, I mostly work 2D but something I really want to explore is the VR art, definitely. Mm. I've seen a lot of videos about it and it just looks so exciting. <laughs> yeah, it has a great potential, doesn't it? Like uh, immediately painting and seeing everything in 3D. It's a completely yeah. different feeling for me. I tried it a little bit uh, and yeah. for me it's the most fascinating because when I'm working in a 3D, I'm not in a live space, but when I'm working in a VR, I literally feel everything what's happening around. Mm -hmm yeah is it did you you tried it i tried it yeah but it's like i would have to get into like learning the software it was it didn't feel natural yet mm. when i tried yeah but i can totally see that becoming more natural and also i guess the technology will evolve and it will feel like right now it's a bit like a, when you we when we were painting and paint back in the day <laughs> like it feels very i don't know stiff yet but yeah, I think it will potentially get better and I really want to like, try yeah. and get it. Yeah, it will evolve. The software will definitely evolve in a better direction soon and I can't wait to see what you can make with it. Mm. But have you, were you always interested in drawing characters or that started to appear when you were in Six More Vodka? How, how did that go? Were you interested? Were you going all over the place like I was uh, trying everything or there was always, I want to do characters, I want to do illustration. No, I guess after the internship, I definitely went more into characters. And before I was doing all kinds of stuff, also tried myself in environments. I was still like searching for what can you do with this as a as work. So I was also, I thought you maybe have to paint like super cool environments like Feng Su or I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so I was trying lots of different things and in the end I think characters are still what interested me most and also when I asked around people told me focus on one and get really good at this one and then it's maybe easier to get a job yeah that's that yeah that is one of way to go because there is always 
I mean, people have two different ideas about it, uh, going in a different direction, going multiple ways or one, but I guess it worked for you going with one thing because you master it, really, really master that kind of work. And mm-hmm. uh, you, you mentioned you're the first person, by the way, that mentions Feng Zhu on my stream. Did you watch his videos? <laughs> yeah, I watched all of them. <laughs> I mean, I also watched them. I, what, what do you think about <laughs> Feng Zhu's work? Do you think he inspired us a lot? Because I think he did, and I would like to talk about that. What, what, how, how did it help you with his, with his videos? I mean, generally, back when I was learning, there was not that much stuff like Gumroad and... Like, I just always had to search on the internet for where can I learn. I didn't have any books about this stuff. So he was putting a lot a lot of content out there for free and a lot of good. Even though sometimes the style was not what I was wanted to do, it's still like a lot of knowledge and about uh, industry and just the mindset. I think that's super helpful when you're learning. Yeah, he was giving all these lectures, I remember that was... Which year was that for you? 2009, 10, something like that? Uh, yeah, probably 2009, 2010. Yeah, I see. And I want to touch now the subject that we started, and that's how did that thing with Riot happen? Entering that kind of studio, every artist wants to be there. You were successful enough to make it there. How did that happen? Um, let me start when I was in university. So after the internship, I still had like, uh, I think one year or one and a half years left of university. And I was um, already doing um, freelance work. Like I started after SMV, more or less, yeah, starting with actual jobs. And so when I was in the last year of university, I was working freelance and already getting jobs that are very similar, I guess, to Splash Art, what I'm doing now. And... I was working for six years before joining Riot now mm. as a, actually very similar work like splash art for games and also a bit of concept art but I think that it helped me that the work was so similar so I already had a portfolio that was very like it matched what they wanted I see. and I think 2014 I had an art test uh, for Riot, but that was right at the time when I was finishing university with the, all the big exams in the end. So that was not a good time. <laughs> and I wasn't ready yet, and I think they didn't use it. And then from there, there I was just going to stuff like THU the, or IFCC, the events in Europe they have, like the workshops, art workshops. And I always try to go to the recruiting sessions like Blizzard, Riot, and I guess they had me like in a file already and then they noticed you they noticed you I yeah I hoped I always hoped (laughs) and then um, I think it was two years ago then they contacted me and I started just freelancing like I had also other clients but they started giving me work and then uh, last year I was hired um, still working from Germany but exclusively working for Riot and then it took me one year to get the visa and then go in-house, yeah. Mm, that dreadful visa, that dreadful yeah. visa that we all have problem with. And uh, yeah, how, how did that go with visa? Because one year to wait, I mean, that's, uh, for me, it's emotional pain, literally, when I hear it. How, how, how did yeah, that I go? Mean, but, in total, with the in, um, application, I mean, no, in, with the interview for the in-house position, it was, I think, almost one and a half years so it took a long time long time really a lot of patience but i was working for them all the time so it was okay mm. um but yeah it's just i think they helped me a lot with the visa they set up all the paperwork stuff and got a lawyer so that helped a lot i think if i would have had to do that by myself i you, could you not would have have. <laughs> i totally it's understand it's more complicated right now so yeah then used to be that long i i mean that was a thing uh, when you think about it you're like i do it a couple of times i bring a couple of papers and that's it pretty mm-hmm. much and then when you start doing it i mean it's a mess it's a mess and 
Yeah. Uh, I, I would like to talk about that. Can you share a little bit information for people? Because there is a lot of us that need a visa to work in that kind of environment. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a bit uh, what you needed for the visa and what they asked for? If we can talk about that, of course. So um, first I tried to get into like H1B, which is like a normal work visa, I think, mm -hmm. with the company. And it's like a lottery. So already getting into the lottery is like a lottery. And I didn't even make it into the lottery. Mm -hmm. I think they just, I don't know what the requirements are. I just sent them over everything. Like that is that I have a degree that I, whatever, all my papers. And then yeah. they, like it took a lot of months, I think two or three months. And then they said, no, I didn't get into the lottery. But even if you get into the lottery, there's still a high chance that you don't get the visa. So yeah. it's, yeah, it, you need a lot of patience and it's uh, frustrating. But then, because that didn't work, they um, tried the O1 visa, which is, I think, for artists and... For talented individuals, athletes. right? For talented individuals. Yeah, when you can, like, prove that you're, like, doing stuff in this field and you can, I don't know, maybe you have articles or... You did a talk or interview yeah. and so I didn't do much of that but they like scrapped everything together that they could find and that finally worked yeah mm. but definitely with the help of Riot. So you got that visa or one visa? Yeah. Nice nice I think it's the best visa for artists because it gives a lot of options you can work mm. and it's crazy I mean it's a crazy papyrology I know all about it because I checked everything and every mm -hmm. year I'm playing lottery to be honest and for yeah, now yeah. nothing is working everybody around me is getting but we shall see how it goes <laughs> yeah one is a lot more work because you have to get recommendation letters it's not like the lottery you, they you need to gather a lot of proof I think I contacted more than 10 people to write me recommendation letters and yeah it's hard you you don't want to run after people and you don't want to be annoying, but I kind of had to mm -hmm. get those. So I'm super grateful that people were so helpful and wrote those letters for me. Yeah, good for me. They're good for them that they did it, and nice from them that they did it. I'm happy. That yeah, definitely. Because yeah. because it's it's a hassle to be honest. Working on it, it's it's a crazy mess. Uh, you yeah. said that you worked before Riot as a freelancer. Mm -hmm. and how did that go? Did you like it? Can you compare it to, to working in-house? Yeah, I think I really like it. And for me, it also gives, right now, it gives, just gives me the confidence that if anything doesn't work out in-house, I could always go back to freelance because I was working six years from home. That, and so at some point I was like, I, I kind of need to change, but it's not because I didn't like it. It's just, I want to learn, I want to grow. <clears throat> so that's why I made the decision too. But I actually really like working as a freelancer. It gives you a lot of freedom. It comes with, like, there's good parts and bad parts. What are yeah. the good parts? Your schedule is super flexible. Like, you can <clears throat> work whenever. Like, I was usually using much more of the mornings and noon to do stuff for myself, maybe working out or being outside, getting groceries, stuff like that. And then my work times were more like in the afternoon, evening, yeah. I see. But I could just plan it. I, I could just, just meet people whenever I wanted and then work around this, the hours I wanted to meet them, stuff like that. But could you balance your work with your life? Because many artists have a problem and that's uh, how do I balance my work <laughs> life with my, with my normal life, social life? Could you balance that? Was it working for you? I think it was definitely a learning process. It wasn't balanced from the get-go, but I think the last uh, three years, I kind of found that balance. I was even, I think I even did a lot for myself and then had to rather find the time to work. So I kind of, how to say it, like, because I did a lot of stuff for myself, then the time I could work was more limited. And then in that time I knew, okay, I have to sit down and have to do it because of the deadline. So mm. I kind of kicked my butt like for myself <laughs> to see, like I needed the pressure sometimes to work faster and 
that's why I rather did something in the morning so I knew the rest of the day I have to sit down and work instead of like sitting down in the morning mm -hmm. starting work and then being like restless because I still have like energy and want to do stuff and not focused really yeah, yeah. And what do you like now about the in-house work? What 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 is the what are the good points of the in-house? Definitely the learning part, I think, and also there's so much stuff that's not directly linked to the art that I'm learning right now. Like just like being in a team, how that works, how being how it like the relationship to the company, stuff like that. Learning a lot of stuff that I didn't have to deal with before when I was just in my room sitting there and painting. Mm. Yeah. Good, good point. I guess like for the professional part of being an artist, that's very helpful. Yeah. Do you want to draw for us now a little bit as we talked or, or are we going to do it in the next interview? How it works for you? I can do that. You can keep uh, asking questions if you want. Sure, sure. I mean, I would just like color maybe some sketches I ha had right? uploaded Let recently. Yeah. Let's do it because it's a bit hard for artists to draw and talk at the same time. But if you want, we can do it. I had to ask. <laughs> I can try. If it doesn't work, we just go back. Of course, of course. Let's try it. Let's try it. We are ready. Let um, me try. Can I even share my screen? You should be able. Um, how do you do that? Uh, oh you, my god, you I'm have, so unprepared. No, no, don't worry, because we are all lost in this Skype. This Skype is crazy. In every stream, I'm like, I don't know where to share it. So you have in your right corner, there should be uh, two squares and they're mm -hmm. biting each other right. next to the heart. Do you yeah. have that? Click on yeah. them and you should share the screen. Oh, cool. Yeah, I see it. Um, and we have... You see my stuff? Yes. That's just what I posted on Instagram lately, like some sketches. I will post your Instagram in the page. Just give me a second. And because now I have a problem, I can't move your screen. Oh my God, stupid Skype. Uh, float, okay. Give me two seconds because now I have a problem with Skype and I don't know what's happening. I'm sorry guys, this is happening every time and I don't know why this is happening, but here we now can see Jennifer working. Okay, so... I'm, is it working? Yes, we can see you, your amazing sketches. There is a girl kissing a guy. <laughs> yeah, it's just some studies I did. Uh, how do you do that kind of studies? You. You, you watch the images or you go on the street and paint as a fast sketches. How does that work for you? I think I, I have all kinds of approaches, but um, usually when I just for myself, I I'll, like I save a lot on Instagram, like small, different things. Maybe it's fa the fabric, maybe it's the face, stuff that I like. And then I save it into where you can save stuff on Instagram. And sometimes I just take it as a like starting point and then build my own sketch around it but it's not always like 100 percent study or so mm. Mm. Yeah. i see so you do you do that kind of investigations a lot because does it help you with your work and how do you master it uh, because th th those are some really fast sketches and i really like them what i see on the screen mm -hmm. um I don't know, I think it's also, like, especially stuff on Instagram, it's more like comfort zone stuff. So I just, it's relaxing for me doing stuff that I, like, I'm interested in. Like, it's not even like, oh, I need to study this. So I, I go really serious about it. It's more like relaxing for me to find stuff that I, I like. And maybe it's fashion, sports, stuff like that. And Do you have a magic brush? If you can uh, share it with me. <laughs> magic? No, I usually, I'm really, I, I use like the round, hard round, hard, or like the soft round, like those two a lot. Oh, damn it, I thought you had some magic uh, brush. The only magic brush I use is actually like a smudge, like it's this one. I don't know where I got it from, but I can show you later when I'm like drawing. Let's it's see. usually, um, let me see. Oh God. 
So there you hear it, guys. There is only smudge, one smudge tool that you can use, and it's a magic. Well, I see a work. This is also not my usual workstation, so bear with me. Ah, okay. Don't worry. We are here. Nobody's gonna run away. Where's the? Oh, here. Yeah, it's this one. I kind of like how it blends yeah. stuff together. Because I usually, I just put the colors on, not really not really accurate, like with gradients, and then I, afterwards I smudge a lot. I see. Usually that's, I guess that's what I use a lot. Uh, your brush, th that smudge tool is on 50%. That's what I have to notice and say. Mine is on 15% when I'm using it. So why do you keep it on such a high level? I don't know. It's just like how it was always. Like I don't really play around much, but mm. it works for me. I kind of like that it has like a. There's always like a hard edge to it. Like it, it's really soft inside, but it creates this hard edge. So yeah. that's um, the thing you're aiming for. Yeah, because you kind of get still like some kind of traditional feeling. Like there's like hard edges, almost like if you use a brush. I see. And I'm kind of. I think it's a bit difficult in the beginning to like balance it because you always like if you do this there's like oh it's not soft but I kind of learn to work around this and I get like this random stuff that I sometimes like like it's like happy accidents yeah yes, I see and now you're gonna paint for us with colors and air so that is not your workstation regular one I remember when we talked in the like two months ago and that you working on a procreate right that's your software. Uh, no, usually I also work on the on Photoshop and on the uh, just right now because I moved and I'm working in house. Like I usually work at the PC at work, mm -hmm. so that's like I have everything like I usually use to. But yeah, the, right now I'm at the laptop at home, so I don't use it much for painting right now. Yeah. It's when I do like studies or sketches at home, I I rather use Procreate, but I don't. Do that that much right now uh what do you like what is the difference between procreate and uh, photoshop why, why do you use procreate and why do you use photoshop can you compare them because i know that many people are switching now from one to another and w what is the biggest advantage for you in one software and the other one um i think procreate is more intuitive in a lot of ways also like the interface and there's stuff that you can like easily try out and I think Photoshop is a bit more, looks more technical. And there's a lot of stuff I don't use. I never use in Photoshop. And the, what I really like about the Procreate one is that it just records your painting always. So if you like do like a study or want to share it, you can always just grab the video. And in Photoshop, it's more complicated. Like you would have to record it traditionally, just screen cap. And I just did that recently, but then you have to cut out so much material that where you're not painting or it's a nice time-lapse tool in Procreate. I love that you're holding your one hand on, on your on your head and you're drawing <laughs> and, and you're so relaxed, but every stroke is so precise that it's hitting exactly where it should go. <laughs> what, what are you using? Are you using uh, Intus, Intus uh, or Cintiq? Yeah, just, just the normal Wacom Wait, tablet. Intus, yeah. Yeah, uh, usually like the M size. Mm, I see. You're I here. have different ones. I have the like in Germany. I still have my Intos three, yeah, like the old one. I really like it. It still works and it's still really good. Holds up. And right now it's the five, and it work. I think I have the newest one. Yeah, mine died uh, last year, uh, and I oh. made I made a statue of its pencil and uh, to keep it as a memory of my work on it for I worked oh, on God. it for eight years for eight years I worked on it yeah I, actually yeah the the Intos 3 I have at home with my parents it's also like my I have a lot of memories with it it's like my first tool I had mm. I'm actually really grateful that my parents like gave me the gift back then because it was kind of expensive and I don't know usually I didn't ask like for a super expensive presence but that was like the one thing I, I knew back then I was painting with the mouse actually first when I was like starting digital art and I was like how does this work how do people get the, yeah. their 
things done. This is insane. And then I noticed, oh, there's something like a graphic tablet you can use. And and then I, I, I really wanted to have that because I knew if I get that, I could do much more. Mm. And I was very limited with the mouse. Yeah, we're painting with mouse. I think the only person that pulled it off was Craig Mullins. And Oops. I think he's the only person that ever succeeded doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. No, I mean, you can do it, but it's just so much wasted energy for me. Like, if you can also just use it like the natural way, like a pen, it's much nicer. Yeah. And uh, your parents, uh, it was a nice gesture from them to get you that kind of present. I, I can only imagine how happy you were when you got it. Were they, yeah. were they always supportive with your art? Yeah, they were supportive, but not like in a way that they were like, they could support me like crazy financially or anything, but they were always not. I think what I value most is that they never said no to anything that I wanted to do. Mm. I think that's the most beautiful thing. So I usually explain to them, oh, I, I really want to do this. I think this is um, important for me. And they always understood. I think that's the best part. Yeah. Uh, many people, you know, when they're talking, uh, don't understand that emotional support is 99% of time more important than the financial one. Because, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that we need to touch this subject since you, you mentioned it and it's a perfect moment to talk about this kind of stuff with students and stuff like that. And uh, many students come and they tell me, oh, I don't have the money or there is mm -hmm. nobody to support me and stuff like that. But honestly talking, art is not that expensive to do. One vacuum mm -hmm. tablet is around 500 euros and that's it pretty much that you need to do with it and to work yeah. on it. And I, I know for some people that's a lot of money, of course, but everybody can get a vacuum tablet in most of the cases. Or yeah. like a used one, yeah. Yeah, there is also a used one. And I know that I created some of the, my best artwork on some cheap, cheap stuff because I was doing it from my heart. And I always <laughs> remember the sentence that I read for George R. R. Martin, <laughs> the creator of uh, Game of Thrones. Did you read Game of Thrones? Yeah, I read them. And uh, I know there was a sentence, I, I will try to reproduce it, but there was a sentence when he said, uh, Pace Ford will never fight good as a, as, a, as a one that's fighting for his country. And, mm. and that's how I perceive art. I think that art is a very emotional thing. And if you do it from your heart, there is no amount of the money that can buy uh, that kind of work. Yeah, I definitely, I mean, I was already mentioning it. I didn't have like a financial background that allowed a lot of stuff. So for me, it was always like, I took it as a challenge. Like, okay, I don't have like, I never had like nice pencils or anything. So I was always like, okay, I'm going to still try to do my best. And like, I'm going to win this contest, even though I have not any good materials. Like it was always like my challenge doing something out of it. So I think definitely don't be limited like don't think it's limiting you because it's I, th I think it's much more the mindset and like being passionate about it like all material like all the good materials all the good technology computers cannot help you if you're not like passionate about it or have like the like the fun also like drawing and doing stuff like this yeah the hard, the hard compensates for all the money out there, right? Yeah, the definitely. Soul. And uh, were you working quite a lot when you were developing your skills? Were you balancing, again, we come to that social life and uh, art life. How did you balance that while you were learning? Because that's a big, big struggle for people. Um, balancing the learning part? Yeah, the learning part. Um, I get asked a lot, like, do you do studies every day, do draw every day. And I think for me, it definitely comes more in bursts. Like I don't do, uh, like st I don't draw for myself every day or stuff like that. And I also had phases where I was really burned out and I didn't want to draw anything. I was like, oh, I'm going to give up and do and become a teacher or something. <laughs> and, and I didn't draw for months or so. I think I always um, had like, phases where I was like really into oh 
I, I really want to draw, but I don't really know what to draw right now. So I was going into studies because studies, you can always do studies and you don't need a like idea or anything. You can just go and draw. And, and I think that's where I learned a lot. Like it's like it's small, maybe it's just like a few days in a year where you did a lot of studies or you read a book and tried out stuff, but the rest of the year you weren't that productive. But I think it, I value that a lot just like whenever you feel that energy that or like the flow that you're right now oh man I, this feels good I'm learning right now then I try to really use that and go more into it yes. and I, I, I admit I didn't have that lately maybe because right now at work it's a lot like to like a uh, lot of input to work around right now so I don't do much for myself personal work or studies but I can totally see that at some point, maybe I'm like dive deep into it again. I see. I see. Also, I see that your girl on the painting has red color of the hair. Is that you? <laughs> oh, that's not hair. That's a scarf. <laughs> okay. I thought it was a hair. My apologies. <laughs> it was red. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have red hair, actually. It's What's the like... color of your hair? And naturally, I have black hair. You naturally. <laughs> But on, <laughs> on the photos and on THU, I remember you Not had... Not right now, yeah. Not ah, right now. Okay, okay. For a second, I thought I was colorblind. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. Not right now. Speaking, speaking about the events, will you be visiting any events this year? Yeah, I'm going to um, Lightbox and THU this year. Okay. Really excited about it. I've never been to an event in the US. Mm, I see, yeah, the Lightbox one. And yeah, you were last year on the THU also. Mm -hmm. I tell yeah. to every guest of mine, when we see each other on THU, because I'm also coming, you have drinks on me. And this year, I think <laughs> I have to buy so many drinks that it's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, THU is always fun. And actually, yeah, it's for me, it's been also a big part of like where I am now. So I'm going to be doing the recruiting this year with uh, my manager too. And right. it's just, yeah, I'm really excited to like see how it goes. And I'm ready to answer all questions if people come to me. Congrats. That's a big, really big thing to do because uh, you'll be responsible for many people and speaking. Let's talk a little bit about that. What does Riot expect for in a portfolio so you get hired? I guess because it's a, a big company, it's important to be kind of specialized like in a small company you might be um, doing 2d and 3d and maybe you have a lot of stuff that you can contribute but I think in Riot it's a lot of specialists like people that are really good in one thing but definitely it helps to have a lot of different skills yeah and I think for portfolio um, definitely have stuff that is um, close to what they are looking for. So if you're applying for concept art, so have concept art stuff in the portfolio and if it doesn't always have to match the style, but maybe the quality of what they want to see. I see. I see. And uh, what I want to know is, uh, so what, what would you, Jennifer, ask for in a portfolio if somebody comes uh, on a THU or Riot and they ask and they say, okay, I want to work for a Riot what what would you ask for from their portfolio? What would you be like? Okay, this is good. I like this. I think first I would ask what they want to do. Like, what um, do they want to do? More illustration, or do they want to do concept art characters, or more like story moments? I think that's always good to know because then you can see where it you could lead people to something. So for illustration, what I am doing, I think I'm always looking for. Like, how does the person understand light? Like, how's the quality of the work? Like, how far do they have pieces that they pushed a lot? Because I know if you're doing pieces for yourself, you maybe not spending always, like, a month on a illustration like we would do it for splash art. But maybe you have, like, one or two pieces that you really try to push yourself as far as you could. And then I think that's visible and... That stuff you can I would like appreciate to see like how far can you push yourself mm. 
and uh, is, is would the right portfolio portfolio for right require to have a lot of work and you would like to see a couple of works only i know i'm asking uh, more uh, uh, smaller questions and smaller kind of pieces but i'm interested to show the public what they should aim for because i know many of them would like to go to riot um if it's more like smaller piece or oh, what was the question uh, would you like to have a lot of work or you would like a specialization oh. in a one one piece like okay let's do this only let's do characters let's do environment it's always easier to talk about a piece i think and it's also maybe more valuable like a few pieces for also for the person i mean having a lot of work is impressive definitely but also giving feedback or like it's better if it's like smaller pieces then you can go from piece to piece and also talk about it a bit instead of like just flipping through all of them that's like it's a very impressive but it's also it's nice if you can like maybe focus on one and talk about it with the person yeah mm. i see or maybe yeah maybe taking like focus on one yeah mm. when talking to, about it yeah i see i see and it's just like what i personally would think might be different for other people okay yeah. Okay, understood. But since you're gonna be there on THU, people would like to hear who's gonna recruit me and stuff like that. And I'm sure that after this, they will be happy to know. Yeah. And what does also does? Uh, I know that many people talk about what kind of, but what kind of characteristics does uh, a person have to have to join the riot? Because many people are talking. Okay, you can have the skills, the best ones in the world, but if you are not like right kind of personality, the studio is not gonna hire you. What do you think are the characteristics that you would require to have to ri for riot hiring? I don't know if I can speak for all of riot. I'm speaking like more from the R team I'm yeah. in, of course. <laughs> of my course. Experience. But I think definitely being very open, open-minded, and also being um, open to growth. So there's a lot, like we get a lot of feedback at work to, at our own pieces, or also we give feedback and just being um, like cool about getting feedback, not, not letting your ego play in too much. That's I think really important because in the end you might have to change stuff that you were like, oh, I like this, but it doesn't work. And then you have to accept it. and if you would like always let your ego like um, stop you from that, then it wouldn't help the team or the product. Yeah. I see. And, and also just, I don't know, everybody, like in my team, I just can't speak for my team. Everybody's so friendly to each other. And I don't know, I think it's just important to you. Don't like not being an asshole, but that's, I think everywhere like that. Yeah. The person needs to be kind and willing to cooperate in a team. Yeah, like just be human and yeah. And I think like for me myself, I'm a, more like a shy person. Like I, I know that. So it's it's really nice to see that people accept that at my team. And yeah, I can still like, it's like about the art and what I can contribute. And I think having respect for that, that's really important. I see. So you're a shy person. Let's let's talk yeah. about that. Many <laughs> artists are shy. And were you shy as a child also? Or when, when, when did you get the capability to talk about? Because you're, I can tell you that you're talking very easy on my stream. Maybe it looks for you that uh, it's, it, it, it's uh, be, I know that when people come to my stream, they're always, oh, was it, was it good? Uh, how did I look? And you're talking very comfortably. When did that happen in your life that you can talk I think, over? Uh, one thing that helped me definitely f with English is like having been here now half a year and having to speak English all the time because that's w that's one thing that it na English is not my native language so I was always a bit more shy or like I knew I would make mistakes and stuff like that and now I'm I still make mis mistakes but I'm not like I don't care anymore <laughs> so it's okay now. I see I see. Yeah. And I think it's always also enough. that's something I appreciate about like the art events or whenever there's like an artist community that we all have like something in common. So that's super easy to break the ice and 
talk to each other. So that's super valuable to have. Uh, yeah, when you come to the THU or ICC or Lightbox or any event, you're surrounded with the similar minded people like you. Mm. And I always love that because uh, you can talk with everybody about many subjects that you can't talk about with the common people. Let's call them common. And uh, I think that that is a really good thing. And what I want to ask you is, you said that the THU, ICC at events like that uh, had a big influence on you. And why do you think that they are important for young artists and artists in general to go and see them? I think it's a lot of stuff. As one of the big things is of course networking, like getting to know your peers, because it's not always the companies that make you like move forward in the career. It's sometimes also just peop your peers, other people that you meet there that are going to be your contacts for life, maybe. So that's super nice, and I really appreciate having had that experience. Like when I, I think first visited. THU I was still living in my hometown but I was just about to finish my um, university and move to Berlin so when I moved to Berlin I already knew people from the art community and that helped just a lot to get adapted to that new city and having like a small group of friends already mm. and I, I see that more and more like even when I came here to the US I already knew some people from before and just so so helpful to have this networking factor yeah because you can also be in a small town or village but in those events you just get to know people and in the end a lot of the networking i mean the relationships are over the internet so you can still like talk to them afterwards but you just saw them in person so it's not that weird anymore to like it just <laughs> write them in the internet yeah. yeah speaking about that i'm now thinking how many friends i have on the internet and i'm talking with them every day and they are literally my friends but they are online friends and every time uh, I yeah look, there's still people i haven't met yet but i have to i'm still like talking to them yeah it's like it's and like, whenever you meet people on those events and you're like oh wow well, we've been following each other for so many years and then you finally meet them it's always awesome it's an awesome experience. It, for me, it's not any more strange, you know. Maybe five years ago, it was very strange for me when I am like sitting when people are like, "Oh, we know each other," or I'm like, "We know each other." But for me, it's now very comfortable, and I yeah, also more comfortable for me now. But I still have it. Like I still have people that I'm like, "Oh wow, I didn't know the face to the artist," and then you meet them, and it's awesome. Yeah. The, so this the, is right now. I'm smudging with my smudge brush. Like you see how the, the strong are super bold and I just soften them out that's and what I usually do a lot what I notice on your painting is that you for you don't do one move with that you feel with exactly the same color but you do a couple of moves and uh, then you start smudging them out as I can see uh, how, how do you achieve the quality of your renders that's what I want to know the high quality of your renders where everything is super polished I think that's much later in the process, but first I always go like from big to small. So right now it's just testing out light. I usually have it on a different layer, like here. So I can still like hue slide it and try out different lights. So I just try out different stuff. Maybe I try lighting from the other side and like just look what works first. So you're, um, you're testing in the beginning the, the first basic colors, then the light. That's how you do it. Yeah, it's not even... I'm not really rendering anything right now. Also, at work, we, we have a similar process where we first do like a color sketch and refine that, in, but in a very basic way without going in and detailing anything. And if the light and everything works, then we go in deep and zoom in and do like detail work. But right now, I just really want to know if the light works before, because then you spend so much time maybe already rendering a face and then like halfway you, you notice like, oh shit, the <laughs> light doesn't work at all. So yeah, that's why I try to use, this is like super light, like there's no, I didn't lose anything yet. So I can just test around. 
uh, what, what I do, the difference between the work, I mean, we do completely different work, but I always mm -hmm. put shadows first when I'm rendering. Yeah, I think it, it, you can go both ways. I can see, like, people do, I also like to do multiply layer, like, uh, it's almost like where the light doesn't hit, I do, like, uh, what is it called? Oh. Do you have any specific pattern when you are putting light that it comes from that or this direction or you switch it and choose it uh, depending from the mood and experience? I can switch it like I yeah, now I turn this one off and I just try and a different one from the other side and then I turn the other one on again and maybe you, I even like them both together so it's just like trying around and there's stuff to consider like if the light comes from this way, then maybe it doesn't hit her face as much. So I just, because the face is like a big part or maybe has gestures, so I, I want to like test where the light could hit without like having a weird shadows on her face or stuff like that. Mm, I see. So it's like testing around, but a bit with like the figure, of course, in mind. Like how it is and what could be interesting shadows. You don't want to like have a shadow that makes like the overall values of the face look weird it's basically like for me it's a bit like photography like when you have actual lights in a studio you know so you go with that kind of lighting you explored photography when you were learning or yeah we had a bit of photography in my uh, university but also it's just testing around with lights i think i like that too like for studies like if you have like a light source and just like move it around the object like how does it react and basically what i'm doing right now it's like just turning on spots like if you have a person in the room and you turn on a light spot it's it's funny because every time somehow the the, the talk goes to photography you know you can run away from it but you always come back to the basics you mean other people also yeah do that? Every, every, every professional artist goes based yeah. to the photography I, yeah I, because Photography is like the art of catching light, so that's what we are doing right now, catching yeah. some. I mean, every artist at some point tested the photography and how the light works. I also tested it because I had to learn it for 3D and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And as you can hear, guys, amazing Jennifer is also using that kind of stuff and other artists that talk, so fundamentals, guys, there is no program that can save you. Yeah, I think light is super important. It makes like the whole doesn't have to always be super accurate but as long as it's believable it it makes the, the image feel real at least if you're like aiming for like realistic or semi-realistic um, rendering I know when I was uh, looking at uh, six more vodka the FCC and Marko Djurjevic was showing off the process and I was blown away how their uh, quality of the value is and that was uh, insane for me so what I want to ask you is, uh, did you learn this kind of stuff in Six More Vodka and that's when you started improving because they really push it to the to the edge? Yeah, I think I definitely picked up some stuff. Maybe also like the, the taste or like the way of lighting. But I, I think what also helped me a lot was like stuff like the book of James Gurney, Color and Light or Imaginative, Imaginative Realism. I think those books... Where, where I really try to learn like how light works in paintings and stuff like that. So you would recommend people you would recommend people that to books. Yeah, I don't read many art books, but those <laughs> I really recommend. Yeah, I'm just yeah. looking for them on my uh, on my Google. They're really common. Like a lot of people recommend them. Yeah. They, I, I, I never saw this book, to be honest, and I'm ashamed a little bit now. But thank you for the information. I will check it out and download it. It's very much fun. Uh, it's very much about the fundamentals. So it's like how you light a scene. And I think he also mentions that if the light is consistent, then it's it increases the believability. Even though the the scene might be look super fantasy, but with the light people can relate and then see oh it's an actual figure in a room i see and what what does inspire jennifer what what are you inspired by um mostly like stuff i like personally <laughs> like fashion sports 
yeah stuff like that what what kind of inspiration do you get from fashion what kind of from sports this is the first time finally someone that's inspired from with sports on my stream <laughs> <laughs> i don't know for me it's like i like to do sports and i tried out different stuff and it's sometimes the feeling like oh it's something i can if i paint stuff that feels like i can relate how i would feel if i would do it so i think that's what maybe people can then feel in my painting then like oh man this is really exciting or the, they can feel the power that you might be feeling if you do the same thing so that's why i also like dancing and like stuff with movement and that's i try to do stuff like studies from dancing and stuff like that because I kind of feel I, I know how it would feel if I would do it and then I think I can transport it better to the painting if I am if I'm excited about it mm. yeah that's exactly what I would say also because for me sport gives that kind of uh, literally emotion that goes through your veins and your blood and mm. so you're trying to translate that you like you like dancing what else did Jennifer did you train anything when you were younger um, when I was younger, I didn't have much uh, going on because I was in a small town mm -hmm. village. But when I was in, living in Berlin, I tried out a lot of different stuff because finally I had like all the options. It's like a big city with a lot of different stuff. So yeah, I was working out a lot and trying stuff like Aikido. And actually like Aikido, it's not, I didn't do it for the martial art like aspect of fighting or anything. It was more... I just liked how flowy it was, almost like a dance. So oh. that was what resonated with me. And I don't know, mostly hard, hardcore stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I went. I was ice um, ice skating and playing ice hockey before Whoa. coming to play it. And now I picked up surfing here. Kind of. Have, I have to adapt to what the options are here. I don't have a car right now, so yeah, I so have to. Adapt to yeah. different life. So you're adventurous type. Yeah, kind of. Mm. As much as I, it allows me to, because of course, as a illustrator, I kind of have to be careful with my hands and stuff like that. But other than that, I used to, I usually like to do. Yeah. The, our, our hands are super important. I know when I trained uh, kickboxing and I was always afraid that I would yeah. break, break my hand and something. Break my head, but don't break my hand, literally. <laughs> That's why I did Aikido, because it was kind of like the softest martial arts you could go. But I would always love to try out stuff like Jujutsu or Judo, because, yeah, I, I really would love it, but I'm just a bit scared of my hands. Yeah. Maybe maybe you can you can put money on your hand like famous people do you know insure it yeah at some point like Beckham or something like that mm, that's a good idea I'm thinking out loud now <laughs> but then again yeah it's just being careful yeah. and still enjoy it because at some point it's like ah oh, just fuck it I'm just going to do it and it gives you so much energy too and inspiration back so. Yeah. Uh, why do you think that artists don't like sports? Because mostly when you say to them, they are like, it's some kind of disease and they're like, no, 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 no sports for me. <laughs> I mean, uh, you're, you're a different kind of artist, to be honest, when you say that kind of stuff. So why do you think that artists, for example, don't like sports? Oh, I wouldn't agree. I think I know a lot of people that do a lot, but yeah, for me personally, it's just getting out the energy. Like I can, I'm not a person that can sit a long time in front of the screen. I love it, like, I love painting, but at some point I just get restless if I don't do anything. Yeah. So I just, that's why I liked doing like workout in the morning because I get all that energy out and then when I'm back, I'm just so dead. I just cannot, there's nothing else to do than painting. So I just sit there and do my stuff and I don't have anything that like gets me away from the painting and I can focus. Yeah, uh, what does it inspire in fashion? I don't know. I just like to follow it, and um, I have a lot of like. I like to focus on materials and fabric. Also, that stuff I, I really like to do when I ha get the chance to in my paintings. So it's always nice to, follow stuff because there's a lot of materials that like I like how it reacts to light or. 
I, I noticed a lot of paintings, there's like all the materials look a bit less the same. And something I, I try to do in my paintings is like um, giving each material a different feel. Like skin should definitely feel different than shiny fabric or metal. So I try to push the difference between the materials. I see. I guess that's why I like following fashion. I mean, of course, there's also like really cool cuts and the attitude and stuff like that. But also, just from an artist's viewpoint, there's a lot of stuff I can grab and get inspiration for paintings. I see. And guys, we are soon finishing. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't because we'll have more, many more guests and many cool episodes such as this one with Jennifer and I want to ask Jennifer one last question before we finish and sure. that's what kind of advice would you give to young artists Jennifer? Uh, following your passion definitely like even though it seems like it's not going anywhere just like if you're passionate about it just keep doing it and also not like in a crazy way like give yourself breaks and just feel like how you feel like if you don't feel like painting you don't have to paint don't be don't pressure yourself just uh always like keep it in your mind that you really like this and follow it yeah follow your heart yep i agree Definitely. completely with you so guys that was amazing jennifer and i'm so happy jennifer that you joined me we touched many subjects and you yeah. also painted yeah. for us it I, didn't go, I didn't go far with this painting, but yeah. No worries, it's, it's quite I'm hard. Kind of relaxing to, on the side. Yeah, it's quite hard to draw and talk at the same time, so I comp completely understand you, yeah. as, especially in an interview. So guys, that was episode 16, uh, Jennifer Wrestling, and this was her amazing art and her amazing story. You can see her on THU, where she's going to be one of the recruiters. And I'm super happy to have you tonight here, actually this morning at your place, because here yeah. it's night. It was such a pleasure talking with you, Jennifer. Yeah, thank you for the invite. I will see you in THU, you have drinks on yeah, me. Yeah, see you there. Like many other artists, and we will drink and have fun and talk there. It was a pleasure yeah. talking with you. Thank you. See you guys, have yeah. a great day. Bye. Bye.